I'm inviting Bob from work to our house tonight, so be sure to cook something. Huh? That's a bit sudden. Just be ready with something. Don't embarrass me. I rushed to get the food ready, frying up some chicken and serving it just as my husband brings his colleague home. With some fries and bread on the side, Bob seems delighted. But the next moment, what my husband uttered was unbelievable. My wife's cooking is usually terrible, so don't set your expectation too high. My name is Megan, a 32 years old housewife. I recently got married to my husband Tommy, who I met at the friend's party. He was the one who approached me, but I gradually fell for him and we started dating. Since then, we were together for about a year and a half before we got married. Once we are married, I want you to stay at home. This was Tommy's request. So I quit my job and decided to become a housewife. To be honest, I still wanted to keep working, but I decided to do what my husband wanted. And so I began a new life, supporting my husband from home. However, hey, what on earth is this? Huh? Tommy is pointing at the seared salmon. It's salmon. It is a season now, and it's delicious. The lemon garlic butter sauce should be good too. I'm not in the mood for fish. What are you? I'm gonna have the microwave mac and cheese. Next time you serve fish, ask first. Okay, sorry. I hadn't expected him to be so harsh, so I'm in shock. Tommy was not like this when we were dating. He was kind and never raised his voice. But we hadn't lived together. And I didn't have that many opportunities to serve him homemade food, so maybe I hadn't seen him for what he really was. Or maybe he just really wasn't in the mood for fish today. I decided to get myself together and try some other recipes. I'm sure he likes meat dishes. Okay, so I will cook him a steak. So I put all my effort into cooking the steak, adding boiled potatoes, carrots, and broccoli on the side. They look beautiful together on the plate. And I pour garlic butter on top as a finishing touch. Tommy will be thrilled. However, uh, what is this? Huh? It's steak. Not that. The carrots and broccoli. How can I eat them on their own? No, I boiled them. They taste well with mayonnaise. That's not what I'm saying. What do you mean? I hate vegetables. No more vegetables. But you should eat vegetables, otherwise, it's unhealthy. Eating disgusting food is unhealthy. I only want delicious food. So these vegetables are yours, and I'm having your steak too instead. Huh? What are you? With that, Tommy flings his vegetables onto my plate and takes my steak. Come to think of it, I don't think I ever even made him a salad while we were dating. From now on, don't use my money to buy vegetables. Oh, So you're saying I shouldn't eat vegetables either? Of course. You're a housewife and you're living off my money. Just do as I say. Unbelievable. If I can't buy vegetables, there's only so much I can cook. We are going to have heavy meals every single day. At first, I start doing as Tommy says, cooking without any vegetables. Steak, fried chicken, hamburgers, mac and cheese, pulled pork, and so on. Until I am constantly feeling sick from all the heavy meals. And eating all this food will lead me to gaining too much weight. 
My skin is in a terrible condition, and I feel so unhealthy. I try making chowder and chicken soup, but Tommy says in a rage, That's not a dinner dish. He says, Don't buy ingredients for chowder or soup with my money. What on earth am I supposed to buy them? I have no choice but to buy vegetables with my own savings and add vegetables to my own dishes. Tommy usually comes home around 8 p.m., so I eat before he returns to hide any evidence. You already ate again? Yeah, I was hungry. What's for dinner today? Pulled pork. Again? We had pulled pork a few days ago. Don't you have any more variations? We are limited in the ingredients we can use. It's a housewife's job to come up with new and tasty dishes. Don't skip the housework. Don't say that. My husband's moral harassment is hurting me to the core. Why does he talk to me like that? I gradually begin to distrust Tommy. Then one day, I suddenly receive a text message from him at around 9 p.m. I'm inviting Bob from work to our house tonight, so be sure to cook something. Huh? That's a bit sudden. Just be ready with something. Don't embarrass me. I panic at the sudden news. What's in the fridge? Chicken. Okay. Let's have fried chicken. I rush to get the food ready, frying up some chicken and serving it just as my husband brings his colleague home. With some fries and bread on the side, Bob seems delighted. Tommy seems satisfied seeing Bob's happy face. Thank God, it seems I managed to live up to Tommy's expectations. But the next moment, what my husband uttered was unbelievable. My wife's cooking is usually terrible, so don't set your expectations too high. Bob smiles bitterly at my husband's word. Why would he say such a thing when everything was going so well? Bob hesitates but puts the fried chicken in his mouth. It's delicious, Tommy! He said with a surprised look on his face. I'm so happy to see his honest reaction. Tommy says, Is it? By trying the food himself. It's eatable today, he adds. He makes it sound like my cooking usually really terrible. Why would he go out of his way to put me down in front of his colleague? If he thinks it's cool, he's so wrong. This incident brings my frustration with Tommy to a new level. I want to punish him. Then an idea comes to me. Maybe this will work. Later that day, I serve my husband a certain dish. Seeing it, his eyes widen. Hey, what the hell is this? There are vegetables in it. Well, it's vegetable soup. I told you not to buy vegetables from my paycheck. Don't waste my money. Forget it. I'm eating a microwave meal. We don't have any. Huh? What are you saying? I stopped buying them. Are you kidding me? You want me to eat this vegetable soup? It's the only thing there is to eat. Oh, and you can have the chicken steak too. What the hell? You do have something eatable. Tommy cuts a chicken steak and takes a bite. Jeez, what on earth is this? What's wrong? It's too salty. What is this? It's disgusting. Is it? Are you kidding me? Have you lost your sense of taste? My taste is perfectly normal. No, it's not. This steak is revolting. Then why don't you cleanse your palate with a soup? Ugh. 
Tommy does as he's told and tries the vegetable soup. How is it? The chicken was so bad, the vegetable don't seem so terrible. Oh, that's great to hear. You are doing amazing eating your veggies. Stop making fun of me. I just like meat. It's not that I can't eat vegetables. Next time, make me a proper meat dish. Okay, okay, got it. Tommy goes back to his room, red faced and angry. The look on his face when he ate the disgusting chicken steak still makes me laugh. Another day, I serve him a hamburger and some salad. Vegetables again. I told you I never eat salad. Just the hamburger. Still muttering to himself, he shoved the hamburger in his mouth. The next moment, he almost spit the whole hamburger out. Oh my, you're covered in it. The meat is burnt black. It's so bitter and disgusting. Oh, is it? I didn't realize. You must feel terrible from the bitterness. Why don't you have a fresh salad to cleanse your palate? Are you out of your mind? You're making bad dishes on purpose. Everything tastes so much more worse than it ever has. That's a terrible thing to say. What's wrong with speaking the truth? Bad food tastes bad. You're a terrible cook. You talk like that to your own mother? Huh? Tommy doesn't seem to understand what I just said. What do you mean? Oh, she's just about to come over. Not long after that, the doorbell rings. Mom, why are you here? Tommy, how was the hamburger that I made? What? You made this? Oh, yes. I also made chicken steak a few days ago. You didn't tell me what you thought of the steak either. Tommy is speechless. Yes, Tommy had actually told me before that his mother was a terrible cook. That's why I asked her to cook for us. Oh well, it was delicious. Thanks for making it, Mom. Oh really? I'm so glad you liked it. Well then, I will come over to make more again. What? No, no, you don't need to. Don't you worry about me. I want to. Do you have any requests? Oh, um. Oh, yeah, vegetable soup. Oh, that's what you want? Yeah, I prefer soup. I'd love to try a tasty soup. Okay, then, leave it to me. And with that, she leaves on a happy note. Tommy looks relieved. Why did you ask mom to cook? Because there's only so much I can cook with all your limitations. That's why I gave our food money to your mother so that she can cook for us regularly. She seems so excited. Why would you do that? Tommy looks troubled. Served him right. The next day, Tommy's mother comes to make vegetable soup. All the vegetables are clearly too large and lumpy. The skin has not been peeled properly, and I'm certain the texture and taste would both be weird. Well, watching her cook, the seasoning she was using was a mess to begin with, so the flavor itself is probably terrible. She put the soup down with a smile. Tommy looks at the soup in the bowl and is in shock. He hesitates but takes a sip. Ugh. Unable to speak, he makes a funny noise. How is it? Do you like it? I worked so hard to making it. Tommy's mother asks with a smile. To make sure he doesn't hurt her feeling, he responds, Your, it's delicious. I'm so happy to hear that. 
Make sure you eat all your veggies. I put so many in the soup. With this, Tommy scooped up a chunky carrot and puts it in his mouth. The next moment, we hear a large crunching sound. Tommy has a bitter look on his face. The vegetables are so big that they are still too hard. Anyone with weak teeth would probably have broken them by now. Tommy continues eating the soup, looking as though he could die any second now. Thank you so much for eating all of it. I will come by again to make more. Tommy's mother happily leaves us. Making sure she is gone, Tommy glares at me. Stop asking mom to cook. What? Why? I thought you were enjoying your mother's cooking. You say you don't like my food, which is why I asked her to come over. Even your cooking is better than mom's. Anyway, if you keep asking mom to cook, you're going to have to suffer her food too, you know? I'm not eating any of her food. Huh? I cook for myself. Hey, wait a moment. You said yesterday you are handing her the food money, right? Are you wasting even more of my money? I'm paying for my own food. What? You're a housewife. Where are you getting that money? It's still part time, but I'm working again, which is why I can afford my own food. What? That's a part time shift? Yes, our nurse job is always in need. I'm actually even thinking of working full time again. Screw you! Who is going to do the housework then? Well, maybe I can ask your mother. How about we ask her to move in to do the housework and cooking? Oh, but I'm cooking and eating my own food. No, no way! You should be the one focusing on the housework. That comment itself is wrong, you know. Huh? What do you think I am? You think I'm just a housekeeper or a slave? I don't think that. Yes, you do. That's why you complain and restrict and abuse me. I won't be harassed by you anymore. Harassed? Don't exaggerate. I'm not exaggerating. I even spoke to your mother and she was angry about you too, you know. What? You told my mom? Yes, I did. That's why she agreed to do the cooking. I heard your father does all the cooking at your house. Your mother knew she was terrible at cooking. No, when I was a kid, mom didn't know she was a bad cook. But your father told her the truth and he started cooking in her place. You just happened to be away at the time and didn't know. So you mean you and mom were purposely making me eat bad food? Well, I had a lot of grudge against you. Screw you! I can still taste the terrible soup and hamburger. They are still lingering in the back of my mouth and it's making me sick. Well, screw you. I will never forgive you. I want a divorce. A divorce? Tommy is angry that I was divorcing him. Wait a minute. You don't have to go that far, do you? Oh, yes, I do. I've recorded every horrible thing you've ever said to me. My lawyer said I could get a divorce and be paid a compensation for your harassment. No way! Not a divorce! You are saying that because there are a lot of women in your office, right? It would reflect badly on you and your career. Tommy works for a cosmetic company. According to a mutual friend, he is known to be a family man. If we got divorced and these incidents become public, he'd be in trouble. But that's not my problem. If you don't agree to a divorce, I'm taking this to court. I'm sending a certificate letter to your office too. 
With this, he replies, "Okay, okay," and reluctantly agrees to the divorce. This is how my husband and I got a divorce. I was able to receive a substantial amount of money thanks to the compensation and property division. It seems my ex-husband was afraid his workplace would find out. Well, I told a mutual friend, so naturally they knew not too long after the divorce. It seems the word quickly spread throughout the company. Naturally, Tommy is now looked down upon from the female employees. Any future for his career is now hopeless, and he feels he has no place in the company. Apparently, his parents were also disgusted by this incident. They cut him off. He is now alone and lonely, spending his days paying the compensation. On the other hand, I started working as a nurse full time, and I'm living a comfortable and peaceful life in a nice apartment. No man needed in my life for a while. So I'm going to save up some money and enjoy traveling abroad and doing things that I enjoyed. Moral harassment really sucks, doesn't it? Anyway, it's hard to imagine how bad of a cook the mother-in-law was. Maybe it was like the terrible cooking that sometimes appear in cartoons. I'd love to try some just to see how bad it is. At any rate. I'm glad Megan was able to leave her lousy husband. I hope she will meet someone much better in the future. Thanks for sticking around until the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you enjoy this video, and see you in the next video.